Coming up on LSU Sports Showtime, both basketball teams had big SEC showdowns. We'll tell you who came out victorious. And the gymnastics team pulled together to score a season-high best against the Florida Gators on Friday. And later, all the scores and highlights from the intramural basketball games last night. All that and your top five plays of the weekend, Sports Showtime starts now. Before we go into our famous intro wrapped by the one, the only, Big Fave, or as he's commonly known, Marlon Favorite, we have some shocking results from our online polls. That's right, Brian. Forty of our loyal viewers voted on what you should have to do following your loss in our Super Bowl bet. The results are in, and it's a tie. With 18 votes apiece, both Dancing to the Thriller and Wrapping the Sports Showtime intro have won. Now, we could be nice, Brian, and let you choose, but that wouldn't be any fun, would it? So we're going to make you do both. Director, cue the music. Tune in to the live game coverage around. We talking LSU sports, showtime in the town. Get the scoop on the ball and sneak peek on the track. He in on the field when them Tigers attack. In fact, you get it back a few times a week. But it starts on Tuesday, third day of the week. They a beast when they broadcast. Increase like fall class. Fatigue when I speak while my squad in the quad, man. Yeah, they the stars on the squad, man. That's the TV see, Tiger TV beat. Every game, every star, every player, every situation, they facing the star in the making. And you get it first exclusively. Now I know you're feeling one. We want the latest on the T-I-G-E-R-S. Uh, that's from LSU Tigers. We get it sparking like fire. All right. Welcome to Sports Showtime, your number one source for everything LSU athletics. I'm Brian Tompkins. And I'm Mary Claire Palmer. Today we're going to break down all the action from the weekend, starting with Trent Johnson and the men's basketball team. Going into the weekend, Coach Trent Johnson had his team on a six-game SEC winning streak and 18-4 overall. One of those four losses came at the hands of Alabama and Tuscaloosa. The Tigers look to exact revenge on the Crimson Tide at high noon on Sunday inside the Maravich Center. Let's take you to the highlights. Starting off the game, it didn't look good for the Tigers. Scenario Homer with that dunk and steal there, making it 11-2. Trent Johnson not happy at all. But Marcus Thorne not for long. He shoots the three from the outside. And then he's going to take it on in the paint there for the dunk. That would be two of his 22 points for the game. Alabama coach doing his Trent Johnson impression, hitting his team with a sad face. But it wouldn't help as Marcus Thorne takes the ball to the basket, gets the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Tasman Mitchell then takes the game himself, fakes the pass, knocks down three. Taz been doing it a lot lately, showing you his range from the outside. The bench gets in there as Quinn Thornton comes in with the throwdown. Backup point guard Bass does the no-look to Quinn Thornton again for two more points. The Tigers were going to beat the Crimson Tide 76-62. Marcus Thornton and Tasman Mitchell dominated the court once again. Thornton racked up 22 points with six rebounds and was 5-for-5 five five at the line. Mitchell scored 16 points with 11 rebounds and 4-6 earning him the SEC Player of the Week. Following the game, the junior forward talked about his team's lack of national respect. To me, it's not at all about being ranked. You know, it's about, it's about just, just, just playing out this conference. You know, whether we get the respect or not, you know, uh, you know everybody would love to have respect, but, like, I don't mind being underdog. You know, uh, that's how we were when we went to the Final Four. LSU looks to stay on top of the SEC as they travel to Mississippi State on Wednesday to face the Bulldogs. Any college basketball coach will tell you recruiting is an essential part to every men's college basketball program. Previously, high schools were considered college prospects, and coaches could contact those athletes with regulations. Now, a new NCAA rule makes seventh and eighth graders official prospects. As Tatum ever shows us, opinions on the new rule are mixed. University high school eighth grade basketball coach James Ross is in it for the kids. I like showing my human side to them so they'll show the human side to me. But a new NCAA regulation proclaiming seventh and eighth grade boys as college prospects has him worried about these kids enjoying basketball for the love of the game. If you have a parent that's on your back constantly in the gym, in the gym, you have no time to be a kid. The main reasons that sparked the change were privately run camps that employ Division I coaches. The NCAA believed this job opportunity gave unfair access to recruit 7th and 8th graders and pressured coaches to attend these camps. The NCAA designed this regulation to protect 7th and 8th grade students and the same recruiting rules apply. Coaches cannot contact them until June following their sophomore year. And that's why Associate Athletic Director for Compliance at LSU, Bo Karen, believed the men's basketball recruiting process belongs in the high schools, not the middle schools. 
First of all, just for the physical development, a lot can happen between now and then, and, and trying to solicit a verbal commitment at that time uh, really is probably not in the best interest of either party. The NCAA was also concerned about the non-scholastic influence these camps had on the recruiting process. And while LSU supports the new regulation, Coach Ross is not completely convinced. If you put that much pressure on them, they might not want to do it later in life. Ross says he just wants to continue motivating his team, reminding them that the most important thing is to have fun. For Newsbreak, I'm Tina Pepper. Bo Karen did note that there may be a loophole in the regulation about allowing coaches to watch these camps. He added that LSU has been in contact with the NCAA to clarify this issue. Struggling to put points on the board, the women's basketball team ended their two-game SEC road winning streak Sunday. After recording a big win against Arkansas last Thursday, the Lady Track Tigers traveled to Starkville to take on the Mississippi State Bulldogs. The Bulldogs started the game with a 16-0 run to end the half with a 27-13 lead over LSU. But junior guard Andrea Kelly fought back, scoring a career-high and game-high 23 points with five three-pointers. Even Kelly's scoring run couldn't bring the Lady Tigers back, though, from the 22-point deficit they faced early in the final period. Despite another 13 points from Allison Hightower, LSU would fall 65 to 55. From the hard courts, to, from the hard wood to the hard courts, this past weekend, the 16th ranked men's tennis team was home at the dub to take on the 27th ranked Rice Owls in a matchup between two of the nation's best. LSU won all of its doubles matches, and this proved to be key in the overall victory for the Tigers. Another bright spot on the course for LSU was the player freshman Neil Skupski. In a position to clinch the overall victory, Skupski topped Chong Wang 6-4 and 6-4 to take the win in straight sets. His clutch victory earned him the honors of SEC Freshman of the Week. The final score of the day was LSU 4, Rice 3. The Tigers are on the road once again as they travel to Columbus on Sunday, February 22nd to face the number one ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. Rain or shine, indoors or out, the women's tennis team proved they can overcome adversity to gain a victory. The 23rd ranked Lady Tigers took on number 27 Texas A&M on a rainy Sunday on the road. The duo of Megan Falcon and Michaela Hedberg recorded the only LSU doubles victory of the day, improving their record to 17 and 3. But the Lady Tigers soon found themselves battling a 3-0 deficit as the Aggies took the doubles point and the first two singles matches of the day. When rain forced later play indoors, the Lady Tigers went on a run, pulling out big wins from freshman Whitney Wolf and Nicole Contour. After battling for over five hours on the courts, the Lady Tigers defeated the Aggies 4-3. The team next faces a doubleheader against Florida State and Southern on February 22nd at the Dubs.